this topic uh, may be looking a little simple, but the impact is huge. The reason being, the concept of whole blood pressure monitoring has actually come in the last decade or so. And whether it's going to overtake the office blood pressure monitoring or can uh, it still will be lagging behind the ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, that is what we need to realize. Blood pressure monitoring is essential because one needs to be in targets. The office blood pressure monitoring, the way we usually do, uh, we hardly take those five millimeter difference or the five millimeter up or down as important figures. But what we have recognized that even a two millimeter increase in diastolic blood pressure can a huge impact on stroke and CVD. So is that important? And Indian Society of Hypertension, I being a part of it, has given a lot of importance on this particular topic. And thank you, Dr. Verma, for giving me this opportunity. So why do we measure blood pressure? Obviously, it's the whole idea is to diagnose hypertension, to titrate the antihypertensive drugs. But what is more important is stability of control, whether we are able to achieve that or not. And that could be the one particular idea behind home blood pressure monitoring. This is the situation, a worrying situation, because one in five is under control only globally. So most hypertensive patients, even if they bring, they come with a very high stage two, Hypertension may not be having symptoms. That's, it could be a casual or just about a finding which you see in your office. And the importance is again under diagnosis and under treatment. What the situation in India is that despite the heavy burden of hypertension and associated morbidity and mortality, you will see only about one third of the population is aware of hypertension that they are hypertensive. And the surprising part is that only less than 10, 11% are controlled as far as the targets are concerned. So one in three is hypertensive. And 10% of urban population are having hypertension. But association hypertension to death is about 57% as far as stroke is concerned and coronary artery disease about 25%. And these are the various modifiable and non-modifiable factors which are responsible for the reason behind hypertension. And if you see, we are all genetically prone. But add to that, just now we heard the demographics of healthcare providers uh, that how many of them were hypertensive. It was something to you know, 25% what I could recognize from the uh, what uh, LSM uh, presented. Now, that is almost similar to what we are getting as a, a totality in our population as well. So we are equally susceptible to hypertension. And the modifiable factors are the one which we should concentrate on, whether it is smoking, obesity, too much salt in diet, too much alcohol, and the most important being the stress factor. So you need to confirm diagnosis of hypertension and at office probably you have to have two visits ideally at one to four weeks apart and you have a systolic 140 by 90 and you can diagnose that as hypertension. But the treatment is based basically if you have grade two or one more than 160 by 100, you initiate with some treatment even on the first assessment. So if you regularly monitor your blood pressure at home, probably you can pick up this uh, hypertension much earlier. So that's extremely important. And that is how home blood pressure monitoring can help. Now this is the classification of blood pressure. One of the classification, the variable classification. So instead of that, what we know is that you can divide them into optimal blood pressure, normal, a little bit of high normal, or then you can grade them accordingly. But more so important is what are the instrument or what is the mechanism of monitoring which you are doing it. So even that can lead to the different kind of modalities for diagnosis of hypertension. Whether it is office blood pressure, yes, it's more than 140 by 90. If it is home blood pressure, 135, 85 uh, can be accepted as hypertension. 
and ambulatory is variability as far as the dynal variation and you can define accordingly what is the, the, the blood pressure level. So you need to screen and diagnose hypertension. What is more important once you come up with a 140 by 90, you need to reconfirm, particularly with the out of office blood pressure measurement. Once you do that and once you're confirmed, probably you have to initiate the modalities for management of hypertension. Now these are the disease why we are worried about hypertension because of the diseases which are attributed to hypertension which increases the mortality and morbidity in patients of hypertension and it practically impacts cardiac, uh, the CNS system, the kidney system and uh, that is why we, we, we need to be worried about uh, the, the, the uh, management of hypertension because uh, both the mortality and morbidity increase because of uncontrolled hypertension. Now, why home blood pressure monitoring? There, these are the few uh, areas which I'm going to uh, take you in. And if you look at the chronobiology of the mortality associated with hypertension or the morbidity, what are the complications, cardiovascular complication, they all are seen to be increased in that time frame of 6 to 12, a, uh, 12 noon. Uh, 6 a.m. to 12 noon. So would you be attending your office to diagnose yourself or to know your status of hypertension in that particular hour? Probably home blood pressure will help you out to understand what is the status of your blood pressure control so that you can be aware of it and adequate measures are taken uh, to control the blood pressure. This is the study which I've clearly showed. 38% of increased uh, MI occurs during this particular hour, 6 a.m. to 12 noon. Similarly, the stroke as well occurs in this V hours of 6 to 12 noon. So why I'm trying to stress upon this, you need to monitor your blood pressure during these hours so that you know what is your blood pressure status uh, during these hours where maximum uh, mortality or uh, maximum complications can occur. So white coat hypertension is another factor where home blood pressure can come for, uh, uh, of importance because it can be about 10 to 20% of whatever you see, uh, hypertension. But more so important is 50% of the patient with white coat hypertension carries a higher risk of cardiovascular disease and tar target organ damage. So again, this white coat hypertension uh, along with mask hypertension are important cardiovascular risk and they can again be picked up by home blood pressure monitoring. The morning surge of blood pressure, as already explained, but what is so important is even a 10 millimeter increase in the morning blood pressure surge results in 22% increased risk of ischemic stroke. So again, reiterating the fact that your blood pressure monitoring at particular hours, where probably you won't have the access to office blood pressure monitoring, will be very important, and uh, thereby you can cut down uh, on the cardiovascular, uh, cardiovascular factors and uh, because they do sh are the independent risk predictors of uh, uh, fatal and non-fatal um, uh, stroke, MI, peripheral arterial disease and heart failure. But then you have two modalities, ambulatory blood pressure mo uh, monitoring as well as home blood pressure monitoring. Now why would you consider as the topic said, which is more important, now home blood pressure monitoring obviously uh, can pick up most of the stuff if properly done. Proper um, uh, measurements are done because it is less expensive and more available and uh, also, not, uh, also not very uncomfortable as ambulatory blood pressure monitor may be. But definitely there are certain errors, but the most of the errors are because of the lack in precision or lack in uh, uh, use of validated machine or improper measurement. So that is what I'm going to touch upon because that's so important that you need to monitor your blood pressure, be it at office or be at home in a very proper way. And then why do you measure? Obviously, as already suggested, you, there are lots of issues which can be managed if you can manage, your, uh, if you measure your blood pressure at home. Early diagnosis of high blood pressure. Wherever you have a risk of uh, hypertension in, uh, and the chances of you getting hypertension, if you keep on measuring your blood pressure at home, you might be able to pick up early uh, the high blood pressure and to identify the white coat hypertension to 
alert your doctor about unexpected changes in your readings. Some question will definitely come up. It's a very common phenomena you monitor shows about uh, one particular reading about 200 by 100 and you, you actually uh, call your doctor at midnight. Very common phenomena that my blood pressure is showing this. Be careful because you need to understand at what the way you have measured uh, uh, has been accurate or not, has been properly done or not, so don't panic. Tell the patient to re uh, measure your blood pressure using all the stringent way how to do it. Help them to make changes or to adjust your medication is another reason why you want to measure blood pressure at home. And these are the various indications. One such indication is obstructive sleep apnea. And even resistant hypertension can be picked up because if uh, uh, this probably patients may not be coming for regular follow-ups, but if properly counseled, they might be doing a proper measurement of blood pressure and they will realize they are probably falling in the group of resistant hypertension and, uh, uh, and can seek the medical help from the healthcare providers. So pregnancy is another area where probably you one need to have a home blood pressure monitor and they need to monitor your blood pressure extensively as advised by the healthcare providers. Obviously, what are the characteristics of home blood pressure monitoring? Monitoring is performed by patient themselves. They need to understand how you need to measure Measurements are performed at home and an automated oscillometric blood pressure instrument are usually used, which are validated. And uh, the whole idea of validation uh, is easily available on a website, which I'm going to show in the next slide. And the characteristic obviously has to be, it should be simpler. In consequence, allow for multiple measurement, reproducible averages, inexpensive, and good acceptance by the users. So these are the major, important, simple characteristics of a home blood pressure monitoring. If they satisfy these characteristics, probably these are the right monitor to be used. And one can get an idea about which are the validated blood pressure monitors. You can get it to the website and you can just type in the name and number of the monitor and you can get it whether they are validated monitor or not. But the most important is the process. The process need to be explained not to not only to your educators at office, but to the patient and caregivers. And this is how one need to educate the, it, it actually is not a one minute job. Whenever you are planning out uh, education for a blood, uh, about how to measure blood pressure at home, or even uh, the, you, you have to teach your uh, educators, it takes some time and it should go, probably I, uh, we, we are doing a lot of educational tool uh, with uh, uh, the academy and uh, it takes about 20 to 25 minutes for a proper education on blood pressure monitoring. So it's very extremely important but roughly overview, yeah, you need to blood, uh, monitor your blood pressure twice daily as advised by your healthcare physician once in the morning and once in the evening. Two consecutive seated measure at least one minute apart. Record for at least four days and preferably for a week. Discard the measurements recorded on the first day, calculate the average. Along with that, you have a proper way of measuring as well. You sh in the morning, you should relieve yourself as the blood and ball is concerned. Sit tight, for, sit quietly for 15 minutes, uh, five minutes, and do not consume any uh, uh, drinks for 15 minutes, like uh, anything which containing caffeine, etc. And then you measure it. And uh, even at night, you might measure it again at the time of, uh, 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 at bedtime. And you get an idea about how well you are controlled uh, in, the, in the whole day. And uh, likewise, if you do it for a few consecutive days, you might get a better idea about your average blood pressure control. And this is the correct posture while taking blood pressure measurement. How many of us we do at office uh, is a big question mark. At least uh, I have seen in different uh, uh, chambers not been practiced properly. So this is what we need to teach not only our educators, but even to the uh, uh, to our patients uh, so that the correct measurement is made and we get an optimum blood pressure uh, measurement. So even uh, so you get a, uh, the, uh, the idea about how to manage if the blood pressure is high and uh, what are the modalities which you are going to use it as far as the pharmacotherapy or 
non pharmacological measures are to be reiterated so uh, i'm not going to go into it but this is what actually is uh, uh, the most important where the fallacy problem uh, lies is most of the uh, people who measure at home uh, or even at the office uh, they do not place the instrument at the right place number one it should be placed at the level of the heart and number two the legs are usually dangling or cross legged so these two should be avoided and obviously 5 minutes of rest and all those stuffs are obviously there and the cough measurement that is also important uh, a reasonable good cough should be used appropriate cough rather i would say but now there are whole lot of factors which could be responsible for inadequate or inappropriate blood pressure measurement and these are the various factors you can see how much is going to impact the blood pressure if that huge is the impact on the blood pressure probably the whole modality of management goes haywire so one need to be very very aware of the fact that ki these are the factors which need to be taken under control before the proper measurement of blood pressure is done a patient is pain is in severe pain and you ask him to place uh, uh, measure the blood pressure probably the blood pressure will be very high if you can go uh, the systolic meter rise up to 20 to 60 mm hg so these are the various factors which need to be attended before coming to what the blood pressure is for that particular individual now even for these various factors which are showing a situation which can affect the correct blood pressure measurement whether is activity whether the cuff size is appropriate or not whether the legs are crossed or it's on the ground and uh, as i suggested the pain or the patient talking very 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 frequently we see you are just chatting with a uh, patient while taking the blood pressure in the office and that can impact the blood pressure measurement and you might be uh, compelled to modify the and pharmacological uh, management for that individual so these are the factors which need to be taken into consideration and practiced adequately uh, Uh, yeah it will take some time but if you teach your educator or your support staff probably this can work so what are the essentials patient training is important knowing of the devices and the cups and the mode remain very important consideration which should be taken into consider casual approach if used casually it will not only cause unnecessary anxiety but unnecessary pharmacotherapy as well home bp monitoring offers advantage over clinical measure uh, bp mo- measurement provided the calibration the validation process readings data processing and interpretation are performed as described and home blood pressure monitoring should be part of a tool for all blood pressure all hypertensive uh, patient this should be what we have realized in covid era we have seen ki yes most of them had this at home and we were able to do teleconsultation but if you have not properly trained the patient then obviously the those measurement may not be adequate for us to uh, plan out our pl- management tool so again uh, it's important for home blood pressure monitoring important who have been diagnosed with high blood pressure starting with high blood pressure treatment to determine effectiveness chronobiology is important in necessary blood pressure measurement monitoring early morning and so is white coat hypertension and this uh, uh, mass hypertension advantage obviously multiple measurements in series can be done expensive less expensive annulling the white coat uh, uh, hypertension improving patient compliance with treatment possibly to digital storing of readings and tele transmission of blood pressure is important now let's go into some important points that self monitoring or blood pressure monitoring is a validated approach to measure out of office blood pressure higher self uh, measured blood pressure associated with increased cardiovascular risk independent of office blood pressure and though there is a lack of strong evidence showing that self measured blood pressure monitoring is superior to abpm and for indication obviously as we already said and 2017 hypertension clinical practice guidelines considered the self measured bp monitoring to a more practical approach than abpm in clinical practice and that we have realized and technique and de- device accuracy is so very important so one need to be uh, vigilant about it and use a standardized protocol for bp measurement and monitoring and definitely use a validated devices and it definitely cost effective as well 
uh, yes, I'm just ending. And the prevalence and frequency is also important, already uh, described by me. But there are a whole lot of barriers to the widespread use of self, last slide, sir. Uh, widespread use of self-measured uh, BP monitoring. There is a patient barrier, which includes performing over, uh, overly rigid protocols over a long period of time, lack of education about benefits of self-measured BP monitoring, lack of feedback and recognition from providers and out-of-pocket cost. Providers' barriers include concern about inaccuracy of devices, not very uncommon, low adherence to self-monitoring, and concerns over patient anxiety associated with self-monitoring, increased burden of practices and staff, all those stuff, and healthcare system barriers, definitely lack of systems for self-measured BP. But let me tell you, all these barriers can be overcome by simple education and counseling, and that is the whole uh, motto and probably uh, Dr. Verma has planned out a study, probably will just give, you, give you an idea about the home blood pressure gu measuring guidelines in India. Thank you, sir.